Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. Watch what fun happens when the next generation makes their way to court. Maybe it's just me, but I'm a little worried about Gen Z. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Thank you and welcome back. So once again, we're on the record uh, in case number 24-2620SM. Ms. Mr. Lee, did you have opportunity to review the allegations on the complaint nature of the offense and the possible maximum penalties uh, with Mr. Shank. I did, and we will waive a formal reading of the misdemeanor complaint, enter a plea of not guilty. Mr. Shank, understanding his rights to counsel, chooses to waive that right and will be representing himself. So Mr. Shank, the next step in the process, the pretrial conference in this case, uh, will be scheduled for September 26th. It's at 9.30 a.m. It's an in-person appearance here at the district court. We will mail you a notice regarding that. May I verify your contact information uh, quickly, please? Mr. Shank, what's your phone number? Uh, it should be on there. Well, I need to verify that information. Uh, and that's for your protection as well. Uh, actually, I don't see a phone number on the... I did not have a phone number. Can you do an email? I will ask for your email as well and your okay. mailing address. Yes, sir. Okay, but well, then it'd be... Uh... And what's your mailing address? Court. <laughs> And is that Columbus, Ohio? Yes. And I, again, the court does not have your phone number. Are you refusing to give that to the court? Um, I would prefer it not to be on there. Okay, we will mail you a notice regarding the date and time of your pretrial conference. Once again, it's in person, 9.30 a.m. at September 26th. Do you have any questions? Um, yes, I do. So um, I'm a little bit confused on a couple things. One is uh, the officer who pulled me over was very threatening. Doug, then... sir, sir, do not discuss the facts of the case on the record on YouTube, and there may be a prosecutor listening, you need to discuss that with an attorney, or if you choose not to, you're going to have to deal with the okay. prosecutor later, but this is not the time or place to discuss okay. the facts of the case. So I can't talk to her at all? Well, it's to protect um, your rights. So okay. the court um is not able at this moment to have a trial, right? That's not how the, the court process works. Okay. Well, the next step in the process is a pre-trial conference where you or you and your attorney would have an ability to talk to a, a prosecutor uh, to see if there is um, any agreement that you might be able to reach as far as maybe a plea offer. Um, by your having discussions with the assistant prosecutor and giving them, you know, your facts of the case, uh, it's possible that the prosecutor would, would have further discussions with you or the police officer uh, in determining how they will proceed with the case. But okay. at this juncture, um, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to know if I could talk to them. Then. You will talk to the assistant prosecutor or prosecutor's office at the time of the pretrial conference. So I can't. September 26th. Okay. So there's no way of doing it today. No. Okay. Well, I'm just a little bit confused. This is only the arraignment. It is not the pretrial conference. There is not a prosecutor here for arraignments. Typically, this is not the, the time to discuss the facts and the law of the case. This is only the arraignment. Okay. Sorry. I I I'm not sure what that means. Okay. There's no, there is no prosecutor here to discuss the case with you. Oh, okay. What the pre-trials for. Got it, got it. Thank okay. you. 
All right. I'm going to place you on a $1,000 personal recognizance bond. So it is a PR bond, meaning you don't need to post any money, but it's your promise that you will be at every court appearance and that you would abide by the conditions of the bond. The conditions of the bond are you may have no boating or marine violations, no threatening, intimidating, harassing, or violent behavior towards any person, and you'll be respectful of all court employees and care providers during the course of your case. So once again, we will mail to you a notice of the date and time of your pre-trial conference. Uh, and you've not waived your right to be represented by an attorney and choosing to represent yourself for right now. So if you're not comfortable with the outcome of that pre-trial conference, you are still able to hire your own attorney or if you would qualify to request the court appointment for you. Okay. okay. Do you have anything further? Um, no, I'm just confused while I'm here. That's all. You're confused why you're here? Yeah, because, um... I, it's a I, misdemeanor that you've been, um, yeah. charged with. And yeah. because it's a misdemeanor, you have certain rights. And we want to make sure you know what those rights are. That's why you had a discussion with the, the defense attorney, Miss Mistily. <laughs> We want to make sure that you know what your um, what the possible maximum penalty is uh, and what the process is. And I, I'm confident that Miss Mistily had an opportunity to discuss all of that with you. Yeah, I'm just confused because I'm in I'm in the state of Ohio and I'm not in the state of Michigan, so I don't really know how it works because like it's different here. So I just didn't know. Okay. Well, the charges occurred, um, the allegations happened in the state of Michigan. And so this is the venue, this is the place where you will need to face those, those allegations. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Um, so for the, the exact day, the 26th, am I yes. in part of that? Um, if I have to then drive from Ohio to Michigan, am I refunded for that or no? No. Not at all? No. Okay. Even though I'm representing myself? Correct. Okay. Do they, do they have anything where they, like, take you there or no? You guys got no, like a only if you committed a felony and you're being extradited from another state. Oh, otherwise, no. Got it. I do appreciate your appearance this morning on the virtual platform, and again, thank you for appearing early. Um, unless you have anything further. Um, I do see that you also have an informal hearing scheduled for this afternoon, which is also via Zoom, right? So you'll appear via Zoom once again, um, and that will be at 3 p.m. So you got that notice as well, right? Um, I did not. This was the only one that they gave me. Thank you. Well, this, the notice for the informal hearing was also mailed to you along with the instructions regarding the uh, Zoom Meeting, it's the same ID uh, that I, you've used this morning. It's the same exact one. Yes. Okay, because I only got I only got one piece of paper. Whatever this one is. I'm not really sure. Okay, well, we'll see you back at 3 p.m. for the informal hearing, and that's regarding the civil infraction of the 150-foot rule violation, okay? Okay, and am I allowed to show evidence that for that? Or no? um, you can't screen share uh, if you're able to, to um, put something on the screen, although we, we couldn't see. I think you tried to hold up a piece of paper, and we couldn't see anything. You can't. Uh, so that, uh -uh. No. Okay. But so you can work on that between now and three o'clock. Got right? it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And we will see you back here at three and also in person on the 26th. Got it. Thank you.
Thank you. And you are free to leave the meeting. Okay. Uh, the court today for arraignment on an alleged violation of my protective order uh, protecting Miss Hodges as the petitioner uh, a violation allegedly occurring around June uh, of this year. And I do have both parties present as an initial matter. I'll invite uh, both parties to state and spell your name for the record. We can begin with petitioner Miss Hodges. Are uh, you muted Miss Hodges? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. My name is Marquita Hodges. It's spelled M-A-R-K-E-T-T-A. -T -T Hodges is spelled H-O-D-G-E-S. Thank you, ma'am. And Ms. Harris. Uh, Sharon Harris, S-H-A-R-O-N-H-A-R-R-I-S. Thank you, ma'am. And Ms. Harris, you're the respondent. I need to swear you in if you'd raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that my your testimony today will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. And um, Ms. Harris, uh, you understand that if I find that you violated uh, the personal protective order, that I would find you in contempt of court, and I could sentence you up to 93 days in the county jail and or a fine of up to $500. You understand that? Mm-hmm. You have to say yes so I can get you for my record? Yes. All right. And... Um, you also understand that if you want to plead not guilty to violating the order, you're able to do that and that then I'll conduct an evidentiary hearing in front of me. It'll also be on Zoom like we're doing this hearing today. Uh, and during that hearing, you're entitled to be represented by a lawyer. Uh, I would appoint a lawyer to represent you at no charge if you can't afford one. And that lawyer could uh, cross-examine uh, Ms. Hodges on her claims uh, during the hearing, as well as subpoena in and call any witnesses that could support your side of the story. You understand that? Yes. All right. And so uh, knowing that, do you want to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty to the alleged violation at this time? Not guilty. All right. I will enter a not guilty plea. Uh, and we will set the matter for a hearing. Lisa, do we have a hearing date and time? Yes, um, November 15 at 3 o'clock on Zoom. All right, hearing to be November 15th, 3 p.m., and that will be on Zoom just like we are today. Uh, and we will send you the paperwork um, Ms. Harris, we have an address for you. Uh, is that still accurate? Yes. Okay, we'll send the information to that address. Okay, um, I have a question. Yep, you may go ahead. So um, I received paperwork right before I received uh, this court date that this PPO uh, signed by Judge Den Dennis Le LeBeer, that this PPO is terminated because of a court date she didn't show up to. Um, so I was just saying like why it was we going on with this matter, just like right now I'm missing a meeting for my child due to this stuff having to keep getting rescheduled and this going on and her lying to the court, she violated her own PPO order, but maybe by then, um, there was a police phone call that happened on this day of the violation that she's saying I did. Was lying, a um, okay. Well, I'm not going to get into the. Thing. Yeah, I don't want to get into the facts of the violation now. Now, my last order that I have here is that I granted an extension. It looks like um, from um, this year, 2024 to 531-2025 um, in here. Uh, and I am not seeing. Uh, and I put in a request to the court to terminate it um, and show proof she did not show up to court. And I never got served about yeah, no, I do see the objection here, but I do. It looks like to me the objection was filed too late. Uh, thus, it uh, it was filed before. Yeah, no. the date for June seventeenth. Oh, yeah, and I am seeing a Judge Lieber order way back from twenty two here, but it says respondent that you, Miss Harris, did not maintain her burden of proof. So that means uh, he left it in place back then. So yeah, we didn't proof. have a court date with the other one that was scheduled June 17th. Let me, let me double check through here, but I am not, um, 
And like I said, this was signed um, by Judge Dennis Lanier and dated <clears throat> by the court on June 17th of 2024 when she did not show up to court. I was never concerned about any court. I was never I did pay um I did pay the prosecutor $150 to serve her through the third party. And I never received mm -hmm. it. Yeah, okay. um, I, well, and I, also I had to go one. back. And, yeah. yeah, I had to go back and sign paperwork because they she they said she was ducking and dodging the servers. Oh, the same thing you did. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, the, 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 I don't want to go into the the details about it, and it really, uh, I do see another one in here by Judge Lieber. This one's dated um, June of 2023, and again, it says uh, that uh, the order is continued. Respondent did not maintain her burden of proof. So uh, I'm not seeing anything in here terminating the order. I'm seeing that it's extended. Thus, this order uh, is still in place. And you're still I have the paper right here that I'll be really you know. <laughs> Well, you know, you can submit it to the court. I'll take a look at it. It could be a different, I, I don't know what the story is on there, but, uh, you know, we'll take a look at uh, Take a look at it. Yeah, you can submit that order into the court if you think I should... Um, not consider it, but I, I'm not seeing the, not seeing it here. So well, I do see one. Out. it has the case number on here. Like I said, I don't have no reason to falsify information. It said uh, circumstances do not exist, which will require the continuation of the PPO order as followed. Petitioner failed to appear to the hearing to justify continuation of the PPO. And then it said it is ordered the objection motion to terminate the PPO order is granted signed by Judge Dennis Lanier right here. Okay, like yeah, no, and I you know, I have, I have flipped through this and found uh, this by Judge Lieber. It is dated um, June of this year, terminating. Let me see what else I got in here. And then I've got mine. Uh, let's see here. All right. Well, it looks like uh, I also have that. Uh, <clears throat> I also have that request number for the police phone call that I made that day. Um, if you would like that request number, no, I have that. evidence of her following me. And, um, yeah. me on car no, and no, I, I don't need any of the evidence right now. All right. I think well, what I am seeing in here is that. Um, uh, she it violated does look her like order. Judge Lieber did in her order. Okay, uh, does look like Judge Lieber did terminate this and in an order dated uh June. Let me take a lot of papers in here. So, Judge Lieber did that June 17th of 2024. However, the violation occurred before that, so the order was still in place before that. You can still be found uh, guilty of violating, and I can still uh punish you by putting you in jail or uh fining you uh because you committed a violation before so what is the what is the violations for her coming to where i was at violating her own ppo i have a question Do you have a ppo on her miss harris yes uh, that you guys just never granted one because i've always tried to put it on after yeah. her and you guys always deny it through the court saying that i can't yeah, get one because get she has a no ppo that's right they're not like uh you get one and i get one uh, you got to separately justify it. So the answer to you is uh, she doesn't have any violation. She's not liable like you are. Um, and well, I wasn't. She came to me. I didn't go to her. To She's lying. Her. I'm so sick of her okay. lying. Well, those are all going to have to come out at the time of uh, the hearing. But at this time, we're still going to conduct a hearing on it. Uh, you can. That's fine. And you said I'll be able to call account. witnesses and and have a lawyer myself because yeah. that witness next to her can uh, tell. We didn't testify okay, that Okay, we're not having any witnesses us. today. So. I don't know why she okay, and and I don't need uh, the crosstalk's not helpful. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, we'll set that hearing for November 15th. I will send you the information to ask for an appointed lawyer. We'll get you a lawyer. We'll conduct the uh, evidentiary hearing at that time. I have a question. Go ahead. So how was a PPO um, terminating if I never got paperwork to show up to a court date and I never knew about a court date? Yeah, it appears they alter, uh, that we authorized alternative service because they couldn't serve you when they tried with a, a process server. So, And uh, I never received that. 
or turn it in. She did, and the, they told me that Tamari answered the door and said she was oh. not there. All right. So well, Ms. Harris, what, I, what I'm going to request, or uh, Ms. Hodges, what I'm going to request you do is stay on afterwards. We'll make sure we've got an accurate address that we're sending okay. you these notices to, because uh, we do have to be able to get a hold of you uh going forward but that's what happened and that's why that got terminated uh without uh, you receiving the notice it appears is that when it's done by alternate service then it's sufficient to have it mailed and uh, stuck on your door or handed to a different person in the house that that's deemed they had the right okay address. i'll still afterwards so we can verify the address because i do not want her to know my address she's talking okay me. very good let's have you stay on after we'll verify your current mailing address just update that with the court and i'll see you both at the hearing Okay. That was concluded. Don't worry about shit, share. I'm not worried about no. Uh, next matter is 23 CRB 1239, State of Iowa versus uh, Ms. Lewis. Ms. Lewis, today's hearing is being recorded. Anything you say can be used against you in the future. Are you Ms. Lewis? Yes, sir, I am. All right, just stand behind the podium there. I can see you. There you go. Today's hearing is being recorded. Anything you say can be used against you in the future. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, you can make an application for a court-appointed attorney. I have two complaints here charging you with telecommunication harassment. Did you receive a copy of those? Um, yes, um, Your Honor. Um, I do have a few things to say. Um, before we get into this, last year when I called, I was with probation officer Samantha Boacker. She was my probation, and she knew I was in foster care because that's when I uh, got my charge when I was fresh 18, the misdemeanor for the first degree assault. I was calling my POs. My POs telling me, Samantha Boacker was telling me to... Um, continue to keep on calling because that she knew that I didn't have transportation and everything like that. And last year that I called around August 30th, they told me that I had a new PO and I told that PO that I couldn't make it down here and she started throwing the harassment charges for me and I have evidence, I have emails that I have sent to you guys and everything like that. And that's the reason why I'm in a predicament that I am in. That's the reason why y'all have a probation violation hold on me and plus that's the reason why y'all couldn't get in contact with me because I never knew that I had another PO. It was Samantha Bo Iger at first, but nobody did not let me know because they knew I didn't have no type of transportation at all. Okay. Did, um, do you need me to read those charges to you? Um, I know there are harassment, both of them, and first degree assault. There's no assault charge. Is that what you're on probation for, you mean? Because they got me on probation, they got me on a probation violation holder for what I don't know. I got arrested at work yesterday. Okay. Literally, at All right. my so job. I mean, we're here on the two telecommunications charges. Do you need me to read those charges to you? No, that's okay. fine. The maximum penalty is 180 days in jail and a one thousand dollar fine. Do you have any other questions about those charges? No. Now, how would you like to plead today? Uh, not guilty. Okay. Do you want to say anything before I set your bond? Um, no, so what I have to spend time and what's going on. Okay, well, let me see what's going on here. There's, you said you're there, a holder for you on the probation violation? Yeah, okay. Zanesville? Huh? You live in Zanesville? No, I live in Columbus. Columbus, okay. What's your... I, 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 I'm homeless at this moment, You're so homeless? I don't have to... Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If you need a court-appointed attorney, get that paperwork filled out, okay? Okay, I'll so... I'll set your bond at 2500 cash, 30, 10%. Okay, 2500 right. Okay, and, okay, all right. So do I have to spend time for that in jail or what? It, um, you're going to be held unless you post your bond. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. He said 25